Anybody need a food ticket? Probably sold half of y'all food tickets while ago. What I'm going to show you is a little bit about rainwater harvesting basics. I don't have anything to sell. Um, when I say Home Depot, I mean gen generic big box store. So any plumbing supply house, uh, Lowe's, your favorite place, tractor supply. But I'm going to show you how to do some rainwater harvesting that's absolutely not rocket science. And uh, almost anybody can do it. Okay, let's go. Rainwater harvesting is not anything new. They've been doing it for ages in uh, areas around Israel in the desert. That's what made Israel and Palestine and all of those areas bloom, basically, is rainwater harvesting. And early 1900 farms and ranches around here had systems both for groundwater and for rainwater harvesting. The Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, when they built their system, had 72,000 gallons of storage, and that was the largest system in the North American continent. Right now, we have a advanced micro devices site in Austin that stores a million and a half gallons of water, one million gallons in one tank, and none of it leaves the site. Go ahead. And why you collect rainwater? Uh, rainwater harvesting pH is almost neutral. Plants love it. Uh, doesn't have our dissolved minerals from the soil or chemicals from water treatment plants. And it can reduce re erosion and should reduce your water bill. Okay. In Texas, rainwater harvesting systems are tax exempt from sales tax. You may need to write that down, print it out, put it in your pocket, and take it to the store with you because not everybody knows that it's tax exempt, but you certainly should not have to pay sales tax on any of this I'm going to show you. Go ahead. First flush filter. This is a broken up little device here without the main piping in it, but it shows the connecting pieces to a poor man's roof washer. This is inexpensive. It, it basically is going to take the first flush of water and go straight down and then has a sewer cleanout plug at the bottom. That sewer cleanout plug can be left partially open so that the water will weep out of there. But every once in a while, you want to close it up completely so it completely fills with water and then open it up real quick. Now, you're going to have to jump because it, it does not go from closed to open. It goes from closed to this fan of spray that will get all over you and it's sticky, bird droppings and twigs and everything else. But that's how you're going to get the first flush of pollen, bird droppings, everything off your roof. From there it will go across and grow across the top of that little blank area into a tank. And that's the simplest way to put it into the tank, except it makes a very attractive place for kids to chin on or twirl on or climb on. So if I ever see one of those more than a foot from the house, it's usually broken. So we're going to show you the next picture. And this shows instead of going straight into the tank, you go down, you can go above ground, below ground, underground, that little line of mulch. I'm standing up on a ladder taking that picture. But that little line of mulch represents the ground level. But you can go underground and then go back into the top of the tank. As long as you go into the tank lower than the highest part of the system where you put solid PVC piping, the tank will always fill. It's like a P-trap under your sink. Go ahead. This shows it all together. So this is the little pieces. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Uh, this shows it all together. And uh, the first flush filter is put together. It shows it going underground and then back up into the tank. The little two little knobs there that's hard to see is just uh, PVC, glue, and solvent. Okay. This shows one of them put together. The one on the left. Uh, if you kind of follow from the farthest left, that is a gutter, and it immediately is using, in that particular case, a uh, 
toilet flange or a closet bend is another name for it. And it's a way that you can go from a bigger hole to a smaller hole very quickly. So it, it replaced the bend in my original metal downspout. It took it straight over to the wall and then the first pipe going down is the first flush filter. Once that fills, then it goes across and down into the second piping. A little close up in the middle shows that piping going across on the ground towards the tank. The little inset at the bottom shows another lady's way of doing it. She has a hose on that first flush filter so that she can use that water somewhere. But remember, it's full of twigs, so she doesn't have a way to get all that stuff out of there. You've got to unscrew that to get it out of there. Uh, it's a good idea for conservation, but most people just kind of waste that dirty water, get the cleaner water into your tank. Go ahead. You'll never get any help at the big box store until you start putting all these little pieces in a basket, and then there's going to be a guy that wants to tell you how to install a commode. <laughs> he's never installed a commode, but he's going to tell you that that's a closet bend and you're going to get ready to install a commode. And I have to tell them, thank you, no, I'm going to install a rainwater system. But that's a closet bin. Yeah, okay. So all of these little pieces, you just go over, as long as you stay in the same area, either uh, Schedule 40, you want to stay in the Schedule 40 area. You don't want to mix them up because they won't fit together. So make sure you stay in the same area and buy your little pieces. Go ahead. Recycled drums can be easily converted into rain barrels. The ones on the bottom there are horizontal. They're joined together, several of them together. Uh, there's some vertical ones there. Go ahead. This is using two of the recycled drums up in the top right hand corner. This is on a little garden shed at a community gardens in Austin. We're putting together the first flush filter and gonna just collect it off of the garden shed to use in the garden. Go ahead. Salvage drums can be left as is or painted better to blend with the landscape. Uh, the ones with the aspidistra on there, they're painted on there and the aspidistra's going next to them. If they'd have painted the background without the same colors of rock, you'd have never seen that one. Uh, the one down at the bottom, they turned the kids loose with some camo stencils and that's on the front of a house, but you can't see that thing. It's completely camouflaged. Of course, there's three kids standing in front of you can't see them either. <laughs> Here's some horizontal ones, some vertical ones, and a rain chain taking water into a rain barrel. You know, rain will follow a chain, so you can actually curve a chain and it'll make the water follow it to a certain extent. But you can use uh, recycled drums to make those rain systems. Go ahead. Recycled drums comes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this guy swore these fell off the back of a loading dock at a computer outlet store. But, uh, they are used for isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to use non-food grade, even if it's going to be just for your vegetable garden. So stick with something that had vegetable oil in it or something like that. But those ones that have the wire frame around them, they're for forklifts. You can stack them. They're a little hard to find, because not because they're being thrown away, but uh, a lot of it's used for recycled oil down in the Houston area, so they, they are being used. But if you can find them, they're great. He had six of them under a deck. He had the deck first, they fit right under his deck. Uh, this was for the Austin rebate program, so in the bottom center photo,